Hey, and welcome to Trail Trials, the video review section of IRunFar.com. My name is Travis Lyles, and in this review, we're going to take a look at the Solomon S Lab Ultra 2. As its name states, this is the second version of the S Lab Ultra. This is a 285 gram in a men's size 9 unisex size shoe, meaning that if you want to go out and grab the women's weight, I, I couldn't find it. I looked on Solomon's site, I looked on all kinds of websites. What you should know is it's less than 285 grams. That's 10 ounces for us folks here in America. It is an 8 millimeter drop from heel to toe, measuring 26 back here at the heel, 18 up here at the toe. It is focused directly at the ultra running crowd, which I find to be interesting is this is another shoe that we're looking at that is very much from a major trail running brand that is focusing in on this sub-segment of the market. It is part of their S-Lab line, which is their highest in terms of material and research and development, and it's what all of their major pro athletes wear. In fact, this one was designed in conjunction with Francois Dehaene, who's a major Solomon Mountain athlete. Even the colors on this shoe are all about long distance and wearing it for a long time. That's what this faded look here is, where it starts in the daylight and goes to night or night to day. That's what they're trying to convey with this colorway is really this is a shoe that you can wear for a long time on long adventures. So with those things in mind, let's get up close and personal. Let's see what this shoe is all about. Let's start off here by looking at the tread. And this uses what's known as the ContraGrip MA compound. This compound is meant to cover a wide variety of terrain and, and distances and really be all about sort of durability and be the best of everything. What I found in my testing of this is that it's a little bit sticky, it's a little bit soft, it's a little bit rigid, it's supposed to hold up over time, which so far I don't see a lot of wear patterns from it, and it's supposed to work across a lot of different terrain types. That's done by just sort of being this middle of the ground type of compound. It's not really focused or specific around anything. It's not really deep lugs. They're sort of shallow, but there's a lot of them. When you're in a long distance race or you're in a long distance adventure, you're going to encounter rock and roots and mud and gravel and streets and pavement, all kinds of stuff. This is a tread pattern that works well in a lot of different scenarios. It's a lug depth that works well in a lot of different scenarios, and it is a compound that is supposed to hold up over a long amount of time. Just in my testing, I haven't seen a ton of breakdown or, or anything anomaly-wise. If you're a Solomon user, you're probably noticing some pretty common things here, and that is lots and lots of lugs with these little bladed type of, of looks. In the back, we have the reverse lugs for braking and going downhill. Up to the front, you see those are pointed upwards or for climbing, so providing traction when you're going uphill. In the middle here, you probably saw this little window that looks into the midsole. And what we have here is what's known as Profeel Film. Try saying that one twice. Profeel Film is a rock plate sandwiched in here in the middle of the midsole and it's not hard and traditional plastic like a lot of rock plates that you might see. In fact, if you push your finger on it, you will feel it bend in there a little bit. And that's the point. The idea is that it deflects obstacles as they poke into the bottom of it. So a lot of times, a rock plate is one big, solid, kind of hard piece of plastic that sits there. And the downside of that is that when you land on things, you're sort of forced to rock one way or the other because it doesn't have a lot of give. Whereas this Profeel film, is meant to sort of absorb it, deflect it, kind of push it away without being a really hard impact. You're less likely to roll an ankle or slip or fall because it's not quite as an aggressive uh, move when it hits some of that hard plate there. You're gonna have some feel to the ground. So even though this is an ultra shoe, this is not a, a max cushion shoe and it's not a hard rock plate. So you're gonna have a little bit of ground feel. It'll be muted, but it's not gonna be like tank-like shoe where you can't even really feel what's underneath you. As we move on to the midsole, what you'll note is a pretty standard kind of foam all the way around. You won't see any blocks or breaking or anything that's meant for like pronation control. That's not really in here. This is very much a, a neutral built type of shoe. This is the Energy Cell Plus foam. The intent of this midsole is to be really a, a big general purpose type of foam that works for a lot of things and long distance. So it's meant for comfort and durability. So again, 
really pushing that idea of ultra. It's not a max cushion shoe, but in terms of Solomon's world, this is a thicker cushioned type of, of midsole than you're going to find on a lot of the S-Lab stuff. A lot of the S-Lab stuff is maybe luggier or very specific, kind of built for muddy or vertical Ks where you want speed and really a precise fit. This shoe is really meant for more of that middle ground. And in fact, if I was to classify this midsole, this is more of a classic type of midsole. It's not really thin and it's not overly thick. So it's really that kind of standard type of, of midsole impact and cushioning and I feel like does a pretty good job in a lot of scenarios. So I wore this on some really rocky stuff. I wore this for some, my first 20 miles was actually road running in these and it felt good, it transitioned well. It's a little firmer than a Hoka or used to something like with a lot of squish to it. This is more of a responsive type of, of midsole. So even though it is cushier than some of the other S-Lab models, you are still looking at a slightly firmer, kind of speedier type of feel uh, when you're running in these, which you know, depending on your style, could be exactly what you're looking for. Moving up to the upper, this starts with Indo Fit, and the Indo Fit is really like a boot, booty type construction, or almost a slipper. And when we look in here, you'll kind of see this black down here in the corners. And what that is, is really from the top eyelet to the bottom eyelet, this is all one sort of wrap inside of the shoe. So the tongue is attached to really a little bit of a, of a gusset on the inside. That gusset extends down all the way to the midsole, wraps itself around, and is over on this side of the midsole as well. So when you slide in, one of the things that you're going to notice first thing is it's a really good fit in terms of hugging your foot, and it feels sock-like. Because of that and because of kind of the lack of stitching, not a lot of hot spots and things like that to be had on the inside or from rubbing because it really is protected and sort of in this little case on the inside of the shoe. Here along the sides is what's known as the skin guard. And this skin guard is this TPU injected mesh. So you'll kind of see this spider webby kind of look on the shoe all along the sides, medial and lateral. This is meant for reinforcement of the shoe instead of being just a straight up mesh type of design. This is actually meant for adding a little bit of durability in, in high abrasion areas. And then I'd also say that it also adds some support to your foot. So when you are moving laterally, you don't feel like you're kind of blowing out uh, of the side, which can happen sometimes in more of these uh, all mesh type of shoes. Moving on to the front, you'll notice this toe bumper. So it continued this rubbery TPU and it thickened it up along the sides. And that's where we turn into a toe bumper to where the outsole actually meets up and connects at the front uh, at the apex for a fairly good toe bumper. Again, it's not, this is not a bomb proof. This is not a tank shoe. It has enough protection to provide you from kind of those, those big hits uh, and, and bumping and, and kicking of things. As we move our way along to the back, you'll notice the mesh really starts to disappear and it starts to be a lot of this molded kind of rubbery TPU material. And that's what makes up the entire heel cup. And this heel cup is really interesting because there's not a hard piece of plastic in there. It's really easy to kind of fold down and it keeps its structure from, from these TPU overlays. And I'll say one of the things that I really was not sure about when I first put this on was that exactly. I didn't know how well this was gonna be able to hold my foot in, uh, but it does a really awesome job. It almost feels like it's suction cups to the back of my heel. And depending on your heel, your results may vary. It fits in here really well. It's soft up here at the top. Going downhill, I didn't feel like there was a bunch of pressure on my Achilles tendon. And then because this is flexible yet sticky, it really just felt like it moved with my foot really well. Moving on up here to the laces. This is the you know Solomon classic quick lace fit. So you've got your lace, it's one big piece of, of, of lace that runs all the way throughout the shoe. The eyelets are made of fabric, there's nothing hard or plasticky. Again, it's all very kind of soft or pliable materials all throughout. You get the shoe on, it's got this nice booty-like feel, you've got a good heel grip, you pull this tight and hopefully cinch your foot down. One of the things I was worried about was because of this quick lace system, you can't move up one more notch and really lock that down. You're sort of stuck with what this is, but with this heel cup, along with this upper, it actually does a really awesome job of locking your foot in. And then I think when you move forward a little bit further and you look at these wings that are really meant to, to keep that upper part of your midfoot in place, this is a really sticky shoe. And what I mean by that is when you put your foot in it, it feels fast, it grips, it's able to manage hitting 
tough turns and downhills really quite well. If you are a previous owner of the S-Lab Ultra, what you'll note is that one of the pair of wings was removed. I went and looked and it looks like there was a lot of complaints online that those were sort of adding some restrictions uh, in the upper. So to give a little bit more space, they removed those wings and they only kept the ones at the top. Uh, which I'd say is probably a benefit for more runners because this is a narrow fitting shoe. Just to kind of look at it, you can see it's streamlined. You look at the bottom, you know, you know it's not like a wide platform. It's got a, a fairly low volume toe box and a fairly narrow toe box as well. So it's one of those things where this is built for speed, I would say more so than comfort. You can get both, of course, it's always gonna depend on your foot type, uh, but this is definitely a slim fit type of shoe. And the last thing I'll call out here on the upper is the quick lace garage. So you get the shoe on, you get it all laced up, and you can simply slide that little lock and your laces directly in here, keeps them from getting snagged. Closing thoughts, a couple of dislikes. One is, is that it's a pretty narrow fit, and because of that, you have a, a low toe box, it's, it's a little bit narrow, the shoe itself is a little bit narrow, it's considered a slim fit type of shoe. So depending on your foot type, it, this may not just work for you. And also depending on how much your foot swells over the course of a, of a big adventure, that may be something to, to look out for. Another thing, it's long. And what I mean by that is that I wear a nine in just about everything. And this is a nine, and I feel like it's like an eight and three quarters would be about right but an eight and a half would be too small. So maybe it's the unisex sizing, I, I, I'm not sure. But for me, this shoe is just a little bit long, but I don't think I could do anything different because it does have a low toe box and it is a little bit narrow. So if I push that back more, I just don't think I would have enough room for my toes to wiggle. Quick laces. I'm just not a fan. I just don't feel like I have enough ability to really dial in the fit the exact way that I want. Sock liner. I got these things wet and this thing curled up under my foot as I was descending a steep downhill. That's not great. You can glue it in, some shoe goo. I've done that on other shoes in the past and it works fine. It's just annoying. And lastly, the outsole. It works pretty well in most cases, but where I found it was not so great is on really slick stuff. So I'm here in Portland, I'm out in the Pacific Northwest, stuff gets slimy and mossy and these things slide. It was even some times where I was running on the road or on a sidewalk and if it was a smooth, wet sort of area, these things had a little bit of slide to them uh, that was not super confident feeling. So what's two like? Well, secure fit. When you put this thing on, you feel ready to go. It's a shoe that like you put on and you're like, yep, I can go run fast in this. It's got a smooth ride on trail and roads. So I wore a bunch of this for road running. I've done a bunch of trail running in it and it works really well on both of those. You feel like you're confident and fast and when you're on pavement, it doesn't feel slappy or out of place. It just works for a lot of different cases. And lastly, is it looks cool. That's a preference, of course, of mine and not all trail shoes because maybe they're really tall or they're really kind of bulky looking are not great for just kind of wearing around maybe after you've retired them to your closet. So with that, questions, comments, Thoughts of your own? Leave those below this video. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.